All right, let's take a look at this circuit that will provide us a 50% duty cycle using a 555 timer. Um, before we go through any kind of analysis here, I'll just briefly show you how this works. Um, we know from the data sheet that when the uh, voltage on the trigger pin falls to one-third VCC, then the uh, value on the output will be high. And when the uh, voltage on the threshold pin rises to four-thirds, I'm sorry, two-thirds VCC, then the output uh, pin, pin 3 of the 555 will go low. So you can actually see that if you're looking over here. Let's just start when the uh, value on the threshold is 2 thirds VCC, which is this point right here. Um, we can see that the output is low. And when the output is low, this capacitor is going to discharge through this resistor until it finally reaches a value of 1 third VCC. At that point, you have 1 third VCC on the trigger pin, which is going to drive the output high and this process will continue indefinitely. Okay. Now, if all you want is the circuit, then this is it, that's all you need. Um, and of course, the frequency, or really all you need is tau is equal to RC. From that, you can derive the frequency, and we'll show you that in just a second. All right, so before we go through the analysis, there's just a couple of preliminary things I want to say here that you probably already know, but let's, let's get over them anyway. If this is VCC and this is zero volts or ground and we're charging our capacitor, it's going to look something like this, right? Well, this value right here when we're charging is what's known as our steady state value or what I'm going to call V sub F or our final value in our analysis. And similarly, if we have a capacitor, it starts out at VCC and again we're going to ground and discharges, then this value down here at zero will be our steady state value or in this case when it's discharging that'll be our V sub F for our discharge. Okay so looking only at the RC network here um, I'm not going to go through this analysis here but if you were to look at this you have some V sub C here right plus minus you have an R and you have an I then you have V sub C C plus minus. If you do a KVL analysis of this you'll end up with a first order differential equation from which you can get the equation that we're actually going to use to derive um, how this is actually giving us a 50% duty cycle. Again, I'm not going to go through that because that's not really relevant to what we're doing. I mean, it is relevant, obviously, but it's not needed for what we're doing. If you want to uh, actually see this derivation, then please go to my website and check it out. I go through this analysis and through this entire analysis that I'm going over uh, right now in a little more detail. It might help you out or just provide some interest. Okay, so. The equation we're going to use here is that V sub C of T, and this is the charge on our capacitor at any point time T, is going to be equal to V sub F, which is this final voltage, a steady state voltage. And again, it'll be VCC if we're charging, and it'll be zero for discharging, plus V sub I, which is the initial value on this capacitor, whatever it happens to be, minus V sub F times E to the minus T over RC. Um, now the, the uh, RC time constant is called tau, which you probably know, and that's just equal to RC. So typically you'll see this RC just replaced by tau. Alright, so let's consider what happens uh, in our circuit here. And we're going to start at this point right here. Well at this point right here, our V sub I is equal to two-thirds VCC. Now we're discharging this capacitor. And as we discharge this capacitor, we want this thing to transition from its low value to its high value. Well, we know that that's going to happen when we put one-third VCC on the trigger pin. So what we're trying to accomplish here is that V sub C of T is going to become one-third VCC. And that's equal to V sub F. In this case, we're discharging, right? So that value is zero plus our initial voltage, which is two-thirds VCC minus again our final voltage or steady state voltage times e to the minus t over rc. Okay, if we do some math here, we'll just go through it just to be uh, a little more detailed. Okay, now then we can cross multiply here and get rid of all of this, right? I hope y'all can see that. I mean, that's pretty obvious. And we end up with 0.5 is equal to e to the minus t over rc. Okay. We know that we can take the ln of both sides. That's going to be equal to ln of e to the minus t over rc. Right? If we solve that, we get minus 0.693 is equal to minus 
T over RC, right? And then if we solve this, we get T is equal to 0.693 RC. Okay, well, that T is the time period to go from 2 thirds VCC to 1 third VCC, which is the time that the output is actually low. So let's just call that T sub L. So a point we want to make here is if we have T sub L, which is the time period that the output is low, and T sub H, which is the time period that the output is high, then um, our total time period is going to be equal to T sub L plus T sub H. Well, by definition, if T sub L is equal to T sub H, it's high 50% of the time and it's low 50% of the time, then that gives us our 50% duty cycle. So what we want to show with this circuit is, in fact, that T sub L equals T sub H. All right, from my previous cat scratching, uh, we saw that T sub L is equal to 0.693 RC. And again, T sub L is the time period which the output is low. The output of pin 3 of the 555 is low. So <clears throat> we're just about to transition here. And we're sitting at this point right here. So our V sub I is going to be equal to 1 third VCC. Now, just recall again, in this case, during this time interval, we're actually charging this capacitor, okay? So we're charging up to VCC. It's going to look something like that, asymptotically approaches VCC. Our final voltage, or our steady state value, V sub F here is equal to V sub CC. So again, our formula for V sub C, the value of the voltage on this capacitor at any point in time, T, is equal to V sub F, plus V sub I, which is the initial charge on our capacitor, minus V sub F times E to the minus T over RC. Now again, in this instance, we're sitting right here. So that's the initial value on our capacitor because we've gone from a discharge state to a charging state, right? So here's our V sub I. Now again, since we're charging, our final voltage, our steady state voltage is V sub CC. So, the only other thing we need here is V sub C T. Well, we know that when V sub C of T, which is the value across our capacitor, reaches two thirds V C C, that puts two thirds on our threshold, which is going to drive our voltage low. So we're looking at this time period when the signal is high while this capacitor is charging, right? That means that we want two thirds V C C. That's gonna be equal to our final voltage, which is V C C. VCC plus our initial voltage, again, we're starting right here at one third VCC. So one third VCC minus our final voltage, VCC times E to the minus T over RC. Okay, we do a little bit of algebra here. We get minus one third VCC, just subtracting VCC from both sides, <clears throat> is equal to one third VCC minus VCC times e to the minus t of rc or minus one third vcc is equal to minus two thirds vcc e to the minus t over rc i think you can probably already see what's about to happen all right we're going to cross multiply and divide through by vcc what that's going to do is give us 0.5 right i'm sure y'all can see that is equal to e to the minus t over rc all right we can take the ln of both sides. Again, ln of 0.5 is equal to the ln of e to the minus t over rc. That's going to give us minus 0.693. Again, that's approximate. Is equal to minus t over rc. If you solve for that, you get t is equal to 0.693 r sub c. Remember that that's the time period when we're going from 1 3rd vcc to 2 3rds vcc which is a time period which this output is high. So this is equal to T sub H. So from the previous slide, we saw that T sub L is equal to 0.693 RC. We just showed that T sub H is equal to 0.693 R sub C. So we have T sub L is equal to T sub H, which implies we have a 50% duty cycle. Now, as far as the frequency goes, that's pretty straightforward, right? We know that the frequency 
is just equal to 1 over the period. Well, the period here is just equal to T sub L plus T sub H. So our frequency is equal to 1 over T sub L plus T sub H. And for this resistive network, this turns out to be 20 kilohertz. And that's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple circuit, pretty straightforward to analyze. Um, if you want to see this in more detail with the equations written out and also with the uh, KVL analysis with the differential equation, please go to my website and check it out. Take care.